thinking out loud. But can't understand. But are they alive? Are they dead? Are they standing? Sitting? Do they care for anything? Wish for anything? Pray for anything? They understand nothing. They know neither suffering nor joy. They have no concerns, but also no relief. Only hunches and chills tell them the end is coming. And so they die out here, miserably, meaninglessly. But something buried inside them kept them alive for just a little longer. So please, try to remain as human as, as you should. Till the very end. Turn not to prayer, but to song. It is all can do. The Thinking out loud. Yes, that's right. I must be a traitor. I've betrayed both proper human history and sincerity. It must be my incompetence, or maybe is how capable I am. At last, the day my sins, my evil deeds, and my duties all come to an end shall arrive. Here, beneath Reichenbach Falls. So, here's what you need to know about this massive singularity. The era is somewhat unstable, but we do know that it is sometime after AD 1700 within a margin of at least a hundred years. The location is presently unclear as well, but based on the vegetation we have discovered we can rule out the Far East, Africa, and Europe. Our best guess is that we are somewhere in America. The magical energy levels are not as high as in the Age of Gods, but we are seeing tremendous fluctuations in the reading. The magical energy ripples are so numerous that it is like observing a pond on a rainy day. Frankly, it leaves me thinking anti-army noble phantasms might be popping off like fireworks in this singularity. And then there is its Foundation of Humanity rating, Error. Error, not EX rank, that signifies non-standard values? Correct. It does not even register as non-standard. It is like nothing we've ever seen. Generally speaking, the smallest of the minute singularities are rated at E-. Any lower than that, and they wouldn't qualify as singularities. Maybe it's just a bug in the system? I hope so. Either way, I will continue to monitor both the rating and the singularity as the situation develops. But the point stands that at the moment, we have many questions and precious few answers. Hmm, then we're essentially in the dark, which means... We don't know more until we go there. I hate to just fly by the seat of our pants, but I don't see that we have a choice. Fortunately, Holmes is one of the servants best qualified for this particular ray shift. Once you get there, I am sure you will be able to get to the heart of the mystery in no time. Right, Holmes? It's quite a responsibility, but you may be rest assured I'm up to the task. Uncovering the truth is the very essence of the detective's calling. Glad to have your Baritsu on board. Haha, <laughs> how very welcoming of you. That's all you have to say about the singularity? Yeah? Then I'll take it from here. You have one other servant accompanying you on this mission, though I'm sorry to say, it won't be Mash. 
right? I'm afraid the Ordinax is still undergoing maintenance. In my capacity as technical advisor, I really can't allow her to ray shift until maintenance is finished. I'm not surprised. All those arduous battles in both Fairy Britain and Tunguska could easily have thrown her spirit origin a bit off kilter. Fo 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 fo. I guess Fo's not coming along this time either. The good news is, we're still playing the race shift mash over there once the Ornex maintenance is done. As for your other companion, this time around, you needn't continue dragging this out. It is I, Count Vlad. Indeed, this is a weighty responsibility, but I shall do my utmost to discharge my duty. There are a number of other servants besides Count Vlad who are a match for this ray shift, but we can only send three in total. Since we are going to send MASH later, that leaves us able to send only two for now. Since Holmes was already a lock for one position, they left only one slot for the last servant. I was chosen after a peaceful discussion. Peaceful in this instance means only a bare minimum of blood spilled. Sounds like they decided the winner by fighting to the death. Master, I know the singularity is full of mysteries, but I urge you to not lose sight of our ultimate objective. Becoming emotionally invested in our enemies can lead to lapses in judgment if we are not careful. But I suppose there is little point in telling you that now. You are our master. Do what you wish. I will remain on standby in my spirit form. Call for me if you need anything. I, for one, feel better already. As a matter of fact, we will also be ray shifting one more very special guest. Huh? But you said only three servants. I did, yes. But the presence of another master will give us a much wider range of options. Scion, does that mean... Kadok? You got it. All right, Kodak, it is time for you to earn your keep. Yeah, yeah. Kodak Zimbalumpus, master of team A, reporting for duty. Kodok, but you're one of the cryptors. Yeah, I actually know that, but my lost belt is long gone. And I obviously can't escape to Olympus anymore either. Surrender is pretty much my only choice here. Not that I expect you to trust me just because of that. Hell no, we don't. That's okay. I'll just have to prove you can frew my actions. What's with that collar? <sighs> Nothing gets by you, huh? Go on, Sion, tell her. Sure thing! That is an Atlas Institute produced Mage Killer Collar. We will be monitoring Kodok during this mission. If he tries anything funny, the collar will activate. And completely destroy his magical circuits. Of course, anything funny includes trying to remove the collar himself. We do not want to kill him. But if he tries to use the collar to intentionally destroy his magical circuits, that is what he'll be. Oh, and be careful when using Magecraft too, since any unauthorized spells could trigger the collar as well. Damn, you guys are brutal, but fine, I can deal. Um, Kodok? Yep. It's good to have you on the team. Yeah, okay. First piece of free advice. 
Mages shouldn't be so quick to offer someone a hand. Our hands convey a ton of information. You're a master too. You should know how important the hand with your command spell is. Mm. He's such a typical mage that he's making me remember I'm actually a mage too. Wokey might be a great master. But she was never really trained as a mage. So I hope you'll keep giving her tips as time permits, Kadok. I will. Mm. What about his serious light, Miss Sion? I was unable to remove it, but please keep that to yourself for now. Understood. If the foreign god could activate the Sirius lights remotely, she would surely have done so long ago. There is little to gain by letting ourselves become overly concerned. Yes, good point. And since the Sirius light is still technically a command spell, uh, the caller should suppress it before it can activate. Granted, we would prefer to avoid testing that theory if at all possible. Okay, Sion, that's it for me. Anything else before we send them on their way? Yes, just one last thing. We were able to extract some keywords pertaining to the singularity through a hieroglyphic prediction. Not a problem. Revolt. Eyelid. Eyelid. What the heck does that mean? I am afraid that I have no idea either. All we can say for certain at this point is that we absolutely cannot afford to overlook anything in this singularity. And that it is on the same scale as the seven singularities. I know this might feel like a setback now that we're finally about to take a crack at the seventh lost belt, but it's just like Sion said. We'll dispose of this massive singularity no matter what. Prepare to ray shift. Got it. Matter of the time, place, prevailing ideology. There is no venture more difficult to succeed in than war. I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Death comes, regardless of race, gender, or age. The talented, the hardworking, and the lucky all die with shocking ease. When living beings die, they become lumps of inanimate meat, but servants don't even get that much. When they die, they vanish without a trace, as if they had never existed at all. Death. Its coming is so mundane, it's enough to drive one crazy. Both heroes who saved their nation and anti-heroes who have harmed countless people are dying for reasons unknown, as though it were completely natural. War never changes. It doesn't matter how much the times change or how far civilization advances. The final stage of negotiations is two sides killing each other. They have but one goal. Rebellion. Not against a king, a god, or even the world but against proper human history itself. Do you understand why you've been called here? This castle was an unbearable place for the summoned servants seasoned by battle. Any ordinary person setting foot inside it would be driven insane by its blood-red glamour and pitch-black madness. 
That madness was personified in the beautiful woman who stood before them. No, Lady Krimmild, I can't think of anything that would. The queen from the Nibel Dungeon Lead who swore revenge for her husband Siegfried's murdered. Desertion in the face of the enemy? Allowing an enemy to escape? Disrupting the battlefield as part of a relentless pursuit. <gasps> Speak. I retreated because Ryder disrupted the battlefield. If I had stayed, I would very likely have died. That wasn't an enemy, it was just a child. A tactical error on my part and one for which I apologize profusely. I see. If we had held out, the city still would have fallen, but my men wouldn't have died needlessly. The penalty is death. Archer, there are no children on the battlefield. Even if there were, they would be servants. If even that escapes your understanding, then you shall die as well. As for you, Ryder... But, but why? You pretended to be contrite, hoping to save your life, because you know what I am like. I have no need for one so shrewd and self-serving. Curse you, you're just a woman driven mad by revenge. Do you think that is a revelation to me? My, my, once again, you've made quite a bloody mess. Is cleaning up messes not your job, Zhangju? Indeed it is, or rather, it's my puppet's job. Go on, then, get to work. How go things on the front line? A deadlock, still. His talent for defense is almost maddening. Well, he is a renowned hero for a reason. Oops, my apologies. How fair things on your end. I've been mustering my Taiping Jing to my knowledge of puppet soldiers to the best of my ability, but it's still going to take some time. You may have all the time and money you need. Just be sure you succeed. Fail, and I will have no choice but to cut your head off, too. Ho ho! Then I'd better give it everything I've got, hadn't I? Hmm. Well, no matter. What about new servants? It seems the new ones were just summoned not too long ago. I believe most of this batch went over to the opposing factions. Hmm. And what about the Righteous Realm? Has it moved? No, it still hasn't budged. The only activity we've seen from his subordinates is scouting maneuvers. I see. He mustn't be waiting to swoop in after the dust settles and claim the spoils for himself. They aren't so weak that we could overrun them all at once, but we can't ignore them either. It's a most vexing position to be in. And in consequence, we find ourselves in this deadlock infuriating. Indeed it is. Have the assassins continued to keep an eye on them? Yes, my lady. And one more thing, your zodiac star was twinkling earlier. Zodiac star? It means someone who will have a significant impact on this singularity is about to arrive, namely... Chaldea. I see, so they're coming. They're really coming. Ah, uh, what to do? What am I going to do about them? How can I best make them suffer? How can I best make them grieve? 
In the end, I will be behind them, of course, but before that, I must be sure their punishment is truly spectacular. How dare some common mage use us as familiars? Please, calm yourself, my queen. There are still prisoners of war, and our society's rules do technically deem we treat them hospitably. I never consented to playing by any such rules. Oh, very well. Have the Chaldeans wandered until we know more? I'm afraid we don't have the scouts to spare. Then recall some of the assassins we sent to spy on the Righteous Realm. Have them keep an eye on the Chaldeans for the time being. Understood. Are you guys done talking yet? Salam. I'm surprised to see you out in the torture room. Torture? I don't know anything about that. I just want heads. That's all. Oh, never mind. Now what is it? What's Chaldea? Ho oh, ho! Well, to make a long story short, I would say there. There are enemies. Nothing more, nothing less. So you're gonna fight them? I'm gonna kill them. Oh. Well, if you have any important heads you want to keep, would you let me hold on to them for you? I'll consider it. I doubt I will, though. Really? That's too bad. Okay, I'm gonna go out for a bit. Want me to pick you up any then? Maybe, um, some Satcher Torture? It's really good. No, thank you. Okay, bye. Are you sure she should be allowed to run about doing as she pleases? That's the way of life she sought as an anti-hero. There's nothing to be gained from denying her. The important thing is that she's a strong fighter. Let her have her fun. As you wish. The preparations for the experiment have been completed, Lord Zhongju. Great, I'll be there, if you'll excuse me, my queen. How irritating. This is all so irritating. Chaldea, the king, the emperor, can't stand any of them. It's all that hero's fault. I might just fall apart if he isn't summoned soon. Come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up. That concludes my report, sir. Thank you, Lancer. You may go. Yes, sir. Yet more heroes' lives have been needlessly lost. Please don't be sad, Your Holiness. As the Pope, you are right to grieve, but that is as far as it should go. These heroes are all willing to lay down their lives to bring you victory in this war. I really don't think I'm worthy of such great sacrifice. One cannot determine their own worth, that is, for others to decide. You may deny yours, despite yourself, or blame yourself for your undeserved fairy tale fortune all you like. But we, your loyal subjects, will continue to love and respect you. Is that such a burden? Honestly, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, that's a problem, then. Personally, I'd rather die happy and smiling than continue on like this. I'm sorry, Your Holiness, but we're not about to let you die. We all pledge to keep you alive, and I consider it my sworn duty. And that, that right there, is exactly why this is such a burden. But fine, whatever. I don't care anymore. Whatever happens, happens. But can I at least ask you one thing, Emperor? What is it? Those atrocities you and the others are committing, are they all to make my desires come true? 
Or are you putting your lives at risk because you want to do these things? That's a difficult question. If that really isn't what you want, then I can offer you my own life for what it's worth. As the emperor of a dying empire, I doubt it will be much. I no, you're right. I hate to admit it, but part of me does yearn to see what happens next. No, I must see it. I have to. Is that the voice of your lord? I don't know. My lord's message can at times be complicated. Enough that an insolent like me can't hope to understand them. Then again, it could be that I... That's enough, your holiness. Only discord and blasphemy lie that way. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's rude. I'll have you know I understand my place very well, thank you very much. Do you? I have my doubts about that. Alright. I'm going to go worship, like I always do. By all means. Don't wait up for me. I need to discuss strategy with my subordinates. Fine. Oh, and can I say one last thing? Hmm? Try not to do too much evil scheming, okay? It'll ruin your good looks. I'll be damned. I guess it's no accident Her Holiness was appointed Pope after all. But I'm afraid I'm not done with evil schemes just yet. We are here, your Imperial Majesty. Good. Let's begin with your report. Yes, my liege. A medium-sized force from the Revenge Realm attacked us three hours ago. They attempted to seize the Tower of Trigonia for themselves. Fortunately, the 30 Archer-class servants you had stationed there drove them away by unleashing all of their noble phantasms at once. I see, so it played out just as I expected then. Yes, my liege. Unfortunately... Ten of our other servants were killed when they tried pursuing the retreating enemy forces. I thought I told them to maintain our defenses, not to give pursuit. You did, my liege. But several, Rider, Berserker, and Lancer classes decided to disobey orders. They were clearly trying to steal a march on the enemy, and... So you're one of the servants who violated the chain of command and went off on their own. F uh, f forgive me, my liege. If you could do it all over again, I trust you would make a different choice? Uh, y yes, my liege. Do you expect mercy? I, uh, I... Heh. <laughs> Sorry to scare you, I understand. As a warrior, instinct drives you to take advantage of opportunities for glory in battle. I couldn't ask my soldiers to suppress those instincts any more than I can ask them to stop breathing. I forgive you, and I ask that the rest of you go easy on them as well. This should go without saying, but achieving great things is your top priority. Even if that means occasionally disobeying orders. Yes, my liege. Very good. Next. These two were caught fighting. You know that fighting between servants is forbidden, especially in this realm. I therefore send you both to the rear guard during the next battle. Alright, you got your sentence. Now move. I'm the last one. 
Oh, I'm surprised to see you here. You've always been such a model soldier. What could one of Alexander the Great's own have done to get in trouble? Well... Yeah. Unforgivable. You have done the one thing that is absolutely forbidden in this realm. We will not tolerate proper human history. Only rebellion is permitted here. There can be neither collaboration with nor mercy for the enemy. I thought you understood that when you chose to stand with us. But we're... Yes, we are heroes. Beings who struggled against, were swallowed up by, or outright disappeared into the flow of history. The shackles binding us to protect humanity are gone, and I... I cannot forgive proper human history, though I admit it, it is a complete one-sided grudge. Nonetheless, this realm is home for those who share that view. Something must have gone wrong with you when you were summoned. You're the ones who have gone wrong. Perhaps, but I cannot stop now. <sighs> I'm off to worship. Leave me. Yes, my liege. I'm not wrong. I'm not lost. Normally, her prayers would be for others, not herself. Prayer should be for others, for something larger than oneself. That is how it should be. Through devotion, you prove who you claim to be. But this time, her prayers are for herself. Her sins are not sins. Her atonement is not atonement. And yet, paradoxically, that devotion is the only thing bearing fruit. It is that paradox that brings her suffering she is powerless to stop. Please grant me salvation. She murmured her wish under her breath, unsure to whom she should direct it. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh no, it's fine. I only just began praying myself. Something wrong? It's nothing. Alright, I will think I'll pray for you next. She prays to help shoulder the burden of his sins, even if doing so stains her own hands with blood. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but as sorry as I am... I can't think of any other way. That concludes my report. According to the caster's analysis, the other two realms battle ended in a painful draw. Damn! So they didn't get beyond skirmishing, but I guess they're still just as wary as us as ever. What do you think, Roland? Of course they are. Our faction may be the smallest, but our forces are just as strong as theirs. If we were to attack them with everything we've got, we'd walk away with the lion's share. And above all, our realm has none other than the Charles the Great. Yeah, who cares about Krimhild and Constantinos? Charles the Great is the only true emperor. You hear that, your imperial majesty? I do. We fear neither the vengeance crazed queen nor the emperor who failed to protect his nation. So says Charles the Great. Whoa, that's our emperor for you. Indeed. 
We will wait until the end before we make our move. A true emperor should never act in haste. Charles also says to tell the assassins to dedicate themselves to their training and to step up their efforts even further. It shall be done, my liege. Either Roland or I will head out next, your imperial majesty. I see. Roland, go get him. I'm honored, my liege. I'll leave straight away. Hey, Roland, don't forget your sanity this time, okay? It only ever happens to you. Uh huh. So, how's it going? It wasn't easy, but we survived another day. What a relief. You did great, sir. Are you sure? All I said was indeed, and I see. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes even a few brief words can speak volumes. And frankly, if you were to say any more than that, your Imperial Aura would be somewhat diminished. Is it just me, or are you saying I'm not much like an Emperor? It's just you. If you say so. But never mind that now. The scouts are getting increasingly noisy. Won't be able to keep those. Sh we won't be able to keep the charade much longer. We won't be able to keep the charade up much longer. With the renowned Charles the Great refusing to show himself for so long, people will naturally assume that he's either gravely injured or harboring some awful secret. But if I just pranced on out there. They'd cut you down before you could say hello. <laughs> well, that sucks for us. This is no laughing matter. You think? Cause it seems like to me, like all we need is for something to happen that'll keep them from suspecting the king. Say, for example, a fourth faction showing up. <gasps> I've got a hunch. That things are about to change. Now's our chance, so we should send lots of scouts to make sure we don't miss it. Your hunches do seem credible. Alright, we'll send out the scouts. Let's add riders and casters to the usual assassins. Our defenses should hold for a while, even if we assign them to other classes. I hope you'll help us too. You got it. Sir. Yes. I feel this will be a crucial turning point for you. Please try to stay on top of things. Of course. I'll show them exactly what I'm made of or my name isn't done. I mean Charles the Great. You're getting into perilous territory, sir. Remember, if they discover the truth, they'll have your head on a spike. Eep. So you must be both cautious and bold, is that clear? Indeed. Now then. If a fourth faction is about to get involved, it would have to be them. Wonder what's gonna happen. Frickin' ow, that's hot. So that's how ray shifting feels? Huh? No, that one was, was kind of odd. Quite right. There was clearly something different about it compared to our usual ray shifts. Oh, well, this is my first, so I've got nothing to compare it to. I'll just have to trust you guys to figure out what's wrong. Master, are you able to contact Caldea? Yes, mash here on comms for Caldea. 
Are you okay, Master? We noticed there was an odd tremor during your ray shift. We're fine. That's a relief. Right. I can confirm that you and Kadok are both unharmed. It looks like Holmes and Vlad made it there as well. According to Sheba's observations, there should be a small town nearby. Is that where we go first? As in all matters, we begin by gathering information. We must learn all we can, even if we must take a few risks to do so. Well, that's the textbook answer. Hmm. But first, let me ask you something. Can you use suggestions? Suggestions? I guess that answers that. So this entire time you've just been going around running your mouth, knowing the locals will think you're either crazy or dangerous? Well, at least her Mystico does have some magecraft built in to dispel some of that incongruity. Whoa, really? I had no idea. Me neither. Seems like the kind of thing you probably should have told her about sooner, but whatever. Alright, I'll use charm suggestions on the locals. You think up what you want to ask them. Will do. So, where exactly are we headed? The town is due north of you. Then let us be on our way. It's a shame we don't have any horses. I'll bring up the rear then. Wilkie, Kodok, you two stay in the middle. Sure. Hmm? Holmes? Oh yeah, my, my apologies. I'll be right there. A clear blue sky that seems endless, a gentle breeze rustling pleasantly over the plain. Everything is quiet and peaceful. It made a horrible feeling of dread take hold and refuse to let go. It was not Kodak Zimlumpus who experienced that feeling, nor was it Woki, or Vlad III, or even Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. But despite her misgivings, she still had no choice but to send Wilkie and her companions to the Singularity. 